Hi, and welcome to this introduction to shock terminology and adjustments. I'm Mike Smith from BRP Training. This is an introductory course covering basic concepts to tuning a vehicle's suspension. It's very important to understand the notion of shaft speed. If the vehicle travels over the same bump at two different speeds, the faster the vehicle is traveling, the faster the shock shaft will have to move to absorb the bump. However, the shape of the bump plays a much bigger role in determining how fast the shock shaft moves. In the first half of the previous video, we saw the vehicle go over a series of small bumps with a very steep initial curve. The shock shaft has to move fast to dampen these bumps. In the second half of the video, we saw the vehicle go over a series of large bumps with a very soft initial curve. The shock shaft moves slower to dampen these bumps. Let's go over the basic components of a typical shock. Note that not all shocks will have all of the components, and some may have more. In general, we have the preload cam lock, the preload cam, the mainspring, and the spring retainer. Another type of widely used shock has a piggyback reservoir. The components are slightly different on this type of shock. We have the piggyback reservoir, the preload lock ring, preload ring, the mainspring, and the lower spring retainer. The installed spring length is measured when the shock is assembled, but not on the vehicle. The springs should not be loose, meaning that at least the minimum spring preload is applied. The shock travel is the exposed length of the shaft, including the bump stop, when the shock is fully extended. It may be easiest to measure before you install the spring. Spacer thickness does not count towards total shock travel. With dual speed compression adjustments, you can adjust the shock's high and low speed compression damping by turning the adjusters. Dual speed compression allows you to optimize handling over small bumps while still having the extra damping required for a big impact. The vehicle service documentation specifies the suspension's factory settings. The high speed compression adjuster affects the compression damping during medium to fast shock shaft movements. The goal is to set the suspension to have as little high speed compression damping as possible without bottoming out. Low speed compression primarily affects the compression damping during slow suspension movements. It also affects traction and the ride comfort of the vehicle. Choose a low speed compression setting that maximizes control without exaggerating rolling in corners, diving when braking, or squatting when accelerating, without causing excessive harshness or loss of traction. Rebound damping controls the rate at which the spring returns to its installed length after it has been compressed. The proper rebound setting is a personal preference and changes with rider weight, riding style, and conditions. A rule of thumb is that rebound should be as fast as possible without allowing the spring to kick back and cause the vehicle to lose contact with the ground. Adjust the spring preload to change the ride height. If the vehicle is too low, increase preload. If the vehicle is too high, decrease preload. Always measure ride height on a flat surface. Before measuring, roll the vehicle front and backwards, bounce the suspension, and turn the steering to make the suspension sit. Excessive spring preload may result in coil bind, which could potentially be damaging to the shock and springs. If you require more preload than the spring manufacturer allows in order to reach the desired ride height, you will need to change the springs for ones with higher spring rate. Refer to the applicable spring chart service bulletin to help you choose the correct spring. A dual spring shock has a main spring and a tender helping spring, which combine to give a softer initial spring rate with a stiffer spring rate deep into travel. The installed spring length is measured when the shock is assembled, but not on the vehicle. The spring should not be loose, meaning that at least the minimum spring preload is applied. The shock's resistance to bottoming out can be tuned by adjusting the crossover ring. 
The spring crossover is the point in the shock travel where the spring rate increases. A softer initial spring rate offers improved handling, while a higher spring rate deep into travel helps to resist bottoming out. As a rough guideline, the spring crossover point should be as deep into travel as possible without experiencing excessive bottoming. The crossover point is defined as a percentage of the total shock travel. Oil can break down, seals can leak, contaminants can enter, condensation can form, spherical bearings can seize. Service the shocks according to the maintenance schedule. For shocks being used in severe or race conditions, the maintenance interval can be as low as 10 hours according to Fox Shocks.